Three months ago, nomads found her dying in northern Siberia. Walker, Kate Walker, born in New York in the United States. She had an American passport on her. She showed up at the clinic last week. She's recovering. She's fine. You're certain, Olga Efimova. You have to keep her there until we arrive. I will do what it takes. You can count on me, Colonel. Hello, Kate Walker. Uh, hello. My name is Kirk, Kate Walker. Kirk of the Yukol tribe. Do you remember the Yukols? Where are we? My memory's all mixed up. There was a terrible blizzard with snow and ice, and then nothing. We are in the clinic of Dr. Zamyatin, in the town of Valsambor. How did I end up here? We Yukos migrate with our snow ostriches to the sacred lands. It's a long journey. A very special journey. One month ago, we found you dying on a riverbank there in the north. We took you in and our shaman cared for you. Afterwards, we continued our journey. And today... We are both here to finish getting better. And you're here because of your injury? Yes. But don't worry about me. Dr. Zamiatin asked a master craftsman from Velsambor to make me a new leg, and he's going to put it on me when it's ready. It will be like a brand new leg. Why are you tied to that bed? That was the decision of Madame Olga, Dr. Zamutin's assistant. She says I'm too restless, and it's the only way to make sure I get better. Apparently, it's going to take a long time to make my artificial leg. And in the meantime, my people are without a guide and are waiting for me, with the herd, so we can continue. If you don't mind my asking about your leg, what exactly happened to you? Soldiers bombed the route we were taking with our caravan. For no reason. Just to frighten us and force us to turn back. I was a bit too close to the explosion. A piece of rock. That's it. You mean the authorities did it on purpose? But why? They think that the snow ostrich migration has no place in today's world, and that my tribe should settle down once and for all. But we will never do that, Kate Walker. That would mean defying the spirits. And the Yukols fear the spirits far more than the soldiers. Why do the Yukols make the journey? My people live in symbiosis with the great snow ostriches, Kate Walker. Their wool protects us from the cold, their excrement feeds our crops, and their meat feeds us. They are also our mounts and beasts of burden, so we must follow them wherever they go. And do they migrate because of the weather? No, Kate Walker. They go to the sacred lands to reproduce. It is an event that only occurs a few times per century. For the Yukols, it is rare to be able to boast of having participated in more than three migrations during one's lifetime. The Yugals I've met didn't speak my language anywhere near as well as you. I'm very impressed. From time to time, missionaries and merchants came through our village. I learned very quickly, Kit Walker. It's important if I am to guide my people. Uh... 
I don't mean to be rude, Kirk, but aren't you a bit young for that? The spirits do not take age into account when they choose a chief for the Yukos. And the spirits are very wise. They do not make mistakes when they choose the one who will guide our people on the sacred migration. Well, Kirk, I'm delighted to have made your acquaintance. I guess I have to go tell the staff that I'm awake, I feel fine, and I have no intention of hanging around here. Of course, Kid Walker. I'm sure someone will be in the yard. Maybe even Madame Olga. What? Hello? Is anybody there? I don't think anybody heard you, Kate Walker. Try using the call button that's located next to the door. Nothing. It doesn't work, Kirk. Hmm. I think I saw some of the staff using it the other day. Take a good look at the mechanism, Kate Walker. Maybe you can find a way to get it working again. This diagram shows how to turn the call button on, but I can't do anything until I can get at the internal mechanism. Search the room. I'm sure you'll be able to find something you can use to open it up with. Nothing useful here. I'm sure the tip of this knife could get this screw out of the bell. Better than nothing, anyway. That should do the trick quite nicely. Now try to use it to see if you can repair the call button. Right. Let's see if I can repair the mechanism. If you're not sure, maybe the diagram you saw earlier might help. Finally. Right, now I just have to find a supervisor. Well done, Kate Walker. I'm going to have a bit of a rest now. Please try to come back and say goodbye to me before you go. The light, the wind, the heat. I can still feel it all. I dream of it every night. I really tried. I tried to tell them I was a whole lot better. They just wouldn't listen. The birds in the aviary are beautiful. My mother would have absolutely loved them. She, she loved birds. Always did. Up to the end. Hello. And who might you be, miss? 
Yeah. Who are we speaking to? Uh, my name is Kate. Kate Walker. Kate? Kate Walker? That doesn't sound too local. Yeah. So how did you get here, Kate? Kate Walker? The Yukols brought me here. The Yukols? They're nothing but chicken thieves. A whole bunch of scumbag morons doing nothing but infesting the streets of Valsambor. Yeah. Now they've come here to do their dirty work. Ah, uh, you mean Kirk, I suppose. For 20 years we've been in this clinic. Since we got back from Baranor. Listen, this place has always actually been a quality establishment. I don't mind admitting. So we were pretty disappointed when we heard that Madame Olga is now letting in those degenerate scumbags from up north. Come on, Anton, come on. Madame Olga knows very well what she's doing. She must have her reasons for letting those midgets in here. Baranor? What's Baranor? A place. It's a goddamn hellhole. What are you talking about, Anton? That's all I have to say about it, Kate. Kate Walker. Can't stir up the past. So have you really been here for 20 years? Yeah. At first we were kept for observation with some of our buddies after that damn mission to, uh, Baranur. Leon and me, we're almost the last ones still here now. We don't know what happened to the others. Gotta say, some of them were pretty bad. Worse than us. Some guys who got it pretty bad. Fortunately, Madame Olga looks after us right. They look after us nicely here. Yeah. She looks after us good. She's a real lady, if you want my opinion. Can you tell me where the exit is, please? It's there. But you won't be able to leave until you've had a meeting with Dr. Mongo Ling in his office. Yeah, he's the one who knows if you're cured or not. I'll be leaving you then, gentlemen. Goodbye. See you around, Kate. Kate Walker. Yeah. See you around. Go hold your head under the ice water in the fountain, Nikita. That'll clear up your damn headaches. Not his time. This isn't a normal headache. It's like a pile of rusty nails rattling in my skull. Well, that's you settled then. Did you speak to Madame Olga or Dr. Mongoling? No. Because maybe they're the ones sticking the damn nails in my head while I'm asleep. Nails. The nail through the nostrils. It's just like I told you. The only thing the doctors want is for us to get better. We'll go see the birds in the aviary later. It helps calm you down. It's even recommended when you have nails in your head. Have you seen the mammoths, too? Go tell the staff, that way maybe they'll believe me. And have you seen any dragons, too? You're finally awake, number 10. What can I do for you? Well, it seems to me that I'm cured. And now I'd like to be on my way. Given your condition, that would seem somewhat premature and perhaps even unreasonable, number 10. I am not a number. My name is Kate Walker. 
I would appreciate it if you would call me by my name, Doctor. There's a perfect example. That aggression boiling up within you. I'm afraid that it may be a significant traumatic after-effect. So you're refusing to let me leave? Oh, no, of course not, miss. I have no intention of abusing any of the prerogatives of my position. Nonetheless, first you must submit to a series of tests that are designed to demonstrate that you have fully recovered. You understand. Please, sit down. I... on that? Yes, yes. Don't be afraid. What the... Don't worry about these restraints. Merely a simple formality that's part of the protocol that Dr. Olga, our supervisor, has implemented. Right. I do believe that we can begin. Now, be so kind as to state your first and last names, age, and place of birth, please. Answer me, please! I guess it can't hurt to give him that information. Maybe it'll bring this farce to an end, too. Do I need to repeat the question? I don't at all like the way this meeting is going. I'd better tell this quack as little as possible. I'm beginning to lose patience. My name is Kate Walker, I was born in New York, and I'll be 30 this year. Good, good, miss. Up until now, my device would seem to corroborate what you say. You're using a lie detector? It's procedure. Please stop worrying and talk to me instead of your friends and family. Are you on good terms with them? If I tell him that I fell out with my friends and family, this guy will see it as some kind of psychological condition. I'd better lie. Do I need to repeat the question? I can't do anything because of his lie detector. I should tell him the truth. Absolutely. I get along great with my family and everybody I work with. You don't seem to be particularly scrupulous with regard to the truth, Miss Walker. Unfortunately for you, you were rather more talkative than expected while you were in your coma. A real chatterbox you were, and we took careful notes. We know that lately you had a most unfortunate falling out with all the people you hold dear in New York. Your mother, your best friend, and even your fiancé. I understand that it all happened after you met Hans Vorlberg. And also a certain... Oscar. Tell me about these gentlemen, please. If I tell him about Siberia and Mammoth, Oscar and Hans, he'll think I'm crazy. But maybe if I only tell him some of the truth, I can fool his detector. Answer me, please! If I don't tell him everything, his lie detector might pick it up. Do I need to repeat the question? Oscar was a kind of automaton. Very special. Very sophisticated. You know, sometimes it was as if he was almost alive. He was designed by Hans Warburg. Hans was a genius. The last of a long dynasty of precision machinery manufacturers. We went on a very long journey together. Then we landed on a small island in the sea called Siberia. Hans knew that there was still a herd of mammoths there that had survived from prehistory. Hans was obsessed by mammoths. Mammoths? Imagine that. It's a strange story, I admit. But I assure you it's the truth, Doctor. To be honest, what I'm interested in, Miss Walker, is that during your travels you were in contact with the Yukul people. The nomads who brought you here to Velzenbor. In your opinion, what should we fear from such a primitive tribe of savages who understand neither law nor border? Refusing civilization and settlement.
His insidious innuendos are unbearable. Do I need to repeat the question? Maybe if I go along with him, he'll finally leave me alone. <laughs>